are calm, when you're relaxed, you are thinking, again, with that prefrontal cortex, which we have discussed. This is the part of the brain that continues to grow until you're 25, and it's the part of the brain that controls our intellect, our rational thoughts, and our judgment. So when we have to make a decision about what to do, I'm going to cross the street. Oh, I look up at the light. Okay, it's not green, so I'm going to wait. It dictates my decision. But when we are in emotional states, and what is sport? It's entirely emotion, okay, when you are playing. Your amygdala is in control of your decisions. Now our amygdala controls our stress and our anxiety response. When you are nervous and you get sweaty palms, that is the anxiety response taking over from this part of the brain. We are trained to have these responses. Now it controls, and it is controlled by the fight, flight, and freeze response. So what you see in a lot of sports is athletes, when they're in practice, they're laughing, having a great time, they're totally relaxed. And then they get in the game and what do they try to do? Put on their serious face and get all angry. And all of a sudden, they can't think the right way anymore. And they don't know why. Why am I doing stuff? Why am I forgetting plays? It's because in your training, you need to be triggering the amygdala. Most people, they don't push themselves to that level, and so they're training with this part of the brain. This will work great for school. This will work great for exam studying. But if you're stressed out and you have other life events going on and then you try to take a test, you're all of a sudden going to go here, and now you can't remember things and you don't know why. It's because it's a different part of the brain that's regulating the decision making. So it's really important to be aware when emotions are trying to take over. When we are in an emotional state, that's when we make bad decisions and we look back and we say, you know, why, why did I do that? Why did I say that? What was I thinking? Well, it's because this is what was going on here. And when we see this in sport, the emotional brain takes over and somebody just loses it, right? This is straight amygdala in control right here. There is no prefrontal cortex that's involved whatsoever. Now, in sport, we have to remember that emotions are reactions, okay? Let's say this again. Emotions are reactions that challenge our consistency. So in the brain, we get emotional, the process switches, you get more stressed, your brain gets overloaded, and now you're basically putting yourself in the position where you can't think logically anymore, unless you've trained it to think that way. So the example I have here, Kurt Rambis, I think this was 1983, could be wrong on the year, but the Lakers were playing the Celtics in the finals. The Lakers had the better team that year, and the Lakers were up in the series. And so the Celtics decided, you know what? We gotta change the mentality of the series. We gotta try to get under their skin. So, Kurt Rambis got clotheslined here by one of the Celtics players. Now, what happened is, there was a melee, there was a fight after, uh, they were supporting Rambis. But, from that point in the series on, the Lakers were more concerned with sending messages and fighting the Celtics versus going back to what their real identity was. What were the Lakers called in the 1980s? What was their nickname, their slogan? Showtime. They were the Showtime Lakers. They were about flying and dunking and acrobatic stuff. The Celtics' identity was entirely about being gritty, basically roughhousing, and we're gonna get you off of your game by doing some dirty stuff. That was their identity, that's what they did. So they did this to the Lakers. And now that the Lakers were so worried about getting them back, what were the Lakers not thinking about? Playing their game, doing what they were doing best, that was actually leading to success. So the Celtics ended up coming back in the series and beating the Lakers simply because of that. And what happened is, Magic Johnson even realized it along with the rest of the Lakers in the offseason. They go, you know what? After they took out Rambis, we began fighting instead of playing. We realized that we were not mentally tougher than the Celtics. So they admitted it. They had to accept that we weren't mentally strong enough, as big as our egos are. And so the next season, what happened? They played the Celtics again in the finals. 
The Celtics tried to do some of that stuff, and the Lakers were not having any of it this year. They were going to keep playing through it, and nothing was taking them off their game, and they ended up winning the championship that year. 